Hello and welcome to Fur, Fins, and Feathers. This is our 47th, believe it or not, episode. And we're very happy to have today a very interesting guest, Lisa Podowski from Lakeville. And welcome, Lisa, to the show. Thank you very much. And you are going to tell us all about a very interesting aspect of performance. Tell us about your career. Um, so we're going to talk about dock diving. I... What is dock diving? So dock diving is a sport that any dog can do. It doesn't matter your size, uh, breed, um, and it is entails jumping a dog jumping off a dock into a 40-foot pool, and you're measured um, how far you jump um, distance-wise. Um, there's some games that you can play um, that measure uh, how fast the, a dog swims, uh, timed races, um, there's dueling dogs, there's all different um, games that each venue has that you can, can participate in. Now this is for purebreds and mixed breeds. For everybody, yes. It's for everybody. And folks of all ages can participate. Yes, so to compete, um, I believe all three of the major venues, you have to be six years old um, to actually compete in an event. But we start them, you know, getting up on the dock, learning how to throw a toy um, in practice earlier than that. My four-year-old granddaughter comes up on the dock with me. So this is a fun activity for all ages yes. and all folks. Yes. So Ultimate Air Dogs, which is the uh, main venue that I'm affiliated with, yeah. um, is very family-oriented. Um, we want your children to come. We want your family to come. Um, we become a great big family. We, we learn to know each other. We make friends. Um, we see each other every week. The competitions in the summer are every weekend. Um, so you really become a part of a bigger family. So and and, we encourage the children. And people travel from all over the area. All over the area, yes. All over New England. I've been across the country, but in the regular season, I travel to um, Connecticut, all the New England states, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, wherever the now competitions are. Now, what is your breed? So I have two dogs that compete. One is a pit bull mix. She's a year and a half old. Uh, she's a rescue from South Carolina. Um, and my older dog who started me on this journey, her name is Charlie, is going to be eight years old this year, um, and she's a black Labrador retriever. And how did you get involved? So it's kind of a funny story, actually. Uh, quite a few years ago, I was getting involved in agility, and somebody um, was giving away a bunch of magazines that... Um, were all agility magazines from Clean Run, um, which is a, a store that sells agility equipment, training materials, things like that. So we drove out to the western part of the state to go get all these magazines, and I mean a lot. There was probably 60 of them. Um, and we happened to go by a venue, uh, place that was having an event. So my husband and I stopped and we watched it. And we were just amazed at the way the dogs were, were jumping into the pool and how far they jumped. And um, the music was playing and the crowd was clapping. And it, it just was fun. It looked fun. And we both said, we wish we had my dog. At the time, she was three. Um, she would have loved it. She loves to swim. And from there, I, I was the first time I had ever seen it. Um, we looked around, but there was no pools in this area that anybody did anything with. Like, there was no events um, now. Of course, there's quite a few of them. But about three years later, the Dog Mall in Carver uh, opened a new facility, and they put in an indoor dock diving pool. Um, it opened on November 1st. I know, will never forget that date, and I was one of the first people in there. I couldn't wait for it to open to try out this dock diving that we had seen uh, with my Labrador. So... That's pretty much how I started. <laughs> and you've had fun and you've oh, become we've a had judge. So much fun. So much fun. I have 
The first year, I um, jumped exclusively with uh, a venue called Doc Dogs. Um, we made, um, we qualified for what Doc Dogs is nationals are, they call them worlds. Um, I went to Tennessee with my dog, um, had a great time uh, with all my friends, competed in worlds. We didn't win anything. There's a lot of dogs there. Um, the following year, some of the other venues started branching up into the Northeast and we got involved with Ultimate Air Dogs and that's the venue that I'm affiliated with and I'm a judge for. Several here. years ago, I was invited in the Boston area to go to a dock diving competition when I was still writing at the Standard Times in New Bedford. And I went to Boston and watched, and it was fascinating. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there were some really, really be wonderful dogs having fun of all, with, with owners of all ages and all abilities, but they were all zeroed in on having a good time. Yep, and that's what it is. We get to spend time with our friends, we get to spend um, quality time with our dogs, and the dogs love it. If your dog loves water um, and toys, they have to be driven because they do have to chase a toy into the pool. Um, it can't be any, you can't use food or anything like that. It has to be a toy that you throw. Um, it, they, it just comes natural to them. They just want to be in that water. Are any breeds more apt to enjoy this sport than others? Um, I think that, I don't know if I'd use the word enjoy. Some are a lot better than others. Um, the world record is held by a whippet. Um, and I believe at last I heard it was 37 feet that they jump from the dock. So that's quite a long way. Of course. Um, we have a lot of Malinois that come. Um, they're big jumpers. We have quite a few Labradors that are 25 feet, 26 feet. Um, it, it's, I think they all enjoy it. It's just a matter of... Some of them are better than some others. Some are better than others, yes. What yeah. about Terriers? Oh, yeah. We have all kinds of... It doesn't matter. When I go to um, Ultimate Games, which the last two years has been in Missouri, this year it's supposed to be in Tennessee, fingers crossed, um, we have Maltese. We have a couple of Dachshunds that jump. They might not jump far, but they get right up there and they want to go after their toy and jump in the pool and go swimming. So it doesn't matter a breed. It doesn't matter how the size of the dog. They just want to be in that water. And of course, the sporting breeds must really enjoy yes. and get a lot out of it right and, so a and, lot and of the you're right a lot of the sporting breeds um uh like the labradors Chessies. and the chessies we have a lot of chesapeake bay retrievers um i'm trying to think we have some german short-haired pointers uh they really because the the hunting instinct is there already so you're throwing that duck my labrador chases a uh what's called a um I can't think of the name. It's a fake duck. It's like rubbery. Um, a rubber duck. Yeah, it has a name, but I can't think of it right now. Um, that's what she chases into the water. Um, so it's like ingrained in them. She's chasing a duck and, you know, competing at the same time, but not really hunting. You know, there's not any live animals that they go after. This whole thing about performance Performance is the key to a lot of people's enjoyment, and they get a lot out of it. Yes. Over the years, over the years, I have seen, uh, as a confirmation judge, as a junior showmanship judge, uh, I have noticed over the years that our uh, the number of activities that we have has diminished. We don't have large dog shows anymore no. like we used to. But people really want to get out with their, with their families and have fun mm -hmm. and enjoy themselves, and they don't have to be all gussied up and dressed. Exactly. Know? Yeah, and, we're uh, out there in in sandals and flip flops and shorts and just it, it, it's almost like a party atmosphere. You know, we go, we set up our canopies, we have our dogs there with us. 
um, and it's it's a big party and the dogs were all cheering each other on and the dogs get up there and and do what they love to do and um, it's just really an, an incredible if you've never you got to experience it um, that time you went to Boston but I would suggest to anybody that if they've never they should come and watch a competition and see how much fun it really is and it doesn't require a lot of money does it well <laughs> it can be of it course. can be um, just like anything it costs to put on an event of course um, so there are entry fees um, you in ultimate air dogs there's no registration fee you don't have to be um, registered with ultimate air dogs in order to compete um, NADD there is a one-time lifetime fee I believe it's $35 and in doc dogs um, I think it's $70 per year um, that's a little bit difference in the in the different venues um, but then when you go to sign up for an event each what we call splash it has a cost um, it's usually around $20 uh, to compete in that splash and you can sign up for as many as you want or as, as few as you want um, and then we also offer games so you can sign up for those as well so basically it's the entry fees um, you know you'd want a crate to create your dog and the toy that they love uh, really that's all you need it's not too too it's not too bad I guess Talk about other performance activities that people can participate in. So we do a lot of stuff. Um, my dogs um, do um, not only dock diving, but um, they participate in agility. I run agility. Um, they participate in nose work. I've done some nose work Talk events. Talk about nose work. So nose work is really fun, too. Um, it's a, a venue that... Uh, um, an odor you train your dogs to find an odor um, usually it's birch um, anise and clove um, and you teach them how to find that when it's hidden so the we might come in a room like this and the judge has hidden a scent and it's usually on a q-tip somewhere in this room and you know there's obstacles in here and they have to use their nose and their brain and smell it and and figure out where that odor is coming from they know that they're looking for a certain odor because you've trained them to that but they have to figure out where it's coming from and they have to find out exactly so like if there was a fan blowing the odor might be over here hidden but the fans making it smell like it's over here they have to figure out that that's not where the source is the source is over here they have to go right to that q-tip and find that exact um, source of the smell it's not just kind of oh you know you walk into a room and air freshener oh that smells really good well where's that coming from you, they have to figure that out um, so that's a lot of fun it's on the same idea as um, police detection dogs um, of course it's not as intense as that and what but breeds would idea. that be good for actually any breeds can do that as well my um, miniature dachshund does it um, my Pipple does it and my Labrador does it. I've seen Dobermans. Um, I've seen, I'm trying to think who's in my class. Labs are pretty good at it. Um, I have a few Labradors in my class, but any breed can do it. It's all about sniffing. And what's good about nose work is it's not, you don't have to have any kind of formal training, um, any kind of obedience training or anything. Anybody can do it because the dog uses its nose. So if they're old and can't really do much, um, they can't run, they can't run agility and go over jumps and things like that. They can do nose work, so they can still participate and have something to do. The other good thing about it is it makes them use their brain. So, you know, in, a, in a, an agility course or a dock diving event, it's physical for the most part. You know, it's, it's, they have to have stamina, they have to be able to swim, they have to nose work. All they got to do is think, use their brain and use their nose. So this would also be good for... Older dogs. Older dogs. We have a lot of older dogs that do it. Yep. Disabled dogs. We, I've seen, I've been at competitions. There's a dog that um, is in a wheelchair that actually competes. So deaf. Yep. Because it's all in their nose. As long as they can smell, you can train them to do it. What other performance activities are good for people? 
Um, lure coursing, I'm trying to think of the things that I've done in the past. Lure coursing is really fun. Um, have you ever been to a lure course event? I have, and that was fascinating. Those are all basically scent hound breeds, aren't they? So lure coursing itself is sight hounds. Yes. Sight hounds, right. Um, but with, um, you can do what's called a cat test, a coursing ability test, and any breed can do that. And now the AKC has come up with a um, what's called a fast cat. And instead of chasing the lure like on a pattern, this is a straight 100-yard dash. And they came up with a formula to um, figure out how fast the dog actually runs. So my Labrador has been clocked at 25 miles an hour. So, and, and it's just this same thing. They're chasing a the lure, but it's fenced in, and it's 100 yards. So when, when the... When the person says tally ho you let go of your dog and they're chasing that lure straight it's a uh, like a drag race you know to the end um and then they get a, a time and akc allows titles for that as well what about earth dog so earth dog seems to me to be very interesting i've seen it i have dachshunds i have not participated i only have so much time and <laughs> and what kind of dachshunds do you have so i have two i have a miniature dachshund and then I have a miniature Dachshund um, Cavalier, King Charles Cavalier mix. Um, that's my agility dog, believe it or not. Um, but I would have loved to get the, the Dachshunds into Earth Dog. I just, there's just not enough time in the day. Um, but that's, they build tunnels and there's rats in cages. Um, and the dogs go in doing their natural instinct and have to go in through the mazes and try and find the rat at the end of the tunnel. When I started in dogs 41 years ago, wow, there wasn't many, uh, there wasn't much room for activities. We went to confirmation, trials, of course, and uh, obedience. Obedience, yeah. And there was some tracking for some people okay. who wanted to participate in that. But for the most part, we were very limited. And now there are so yeah. many activities. There are. There's just you reminded me. There's rally, which is kind of obedience. In my mind, it's more fun obedience <laughs> rather than such a strict um, uh, venue. You know, you you can talk to your dog. You can um, encourage your dog. Things like that. So. I have had Jeff Botello on TV here with his talk about agility yep. and his and his He's amazing at agility. He is an amazing person and he's also my physical therapist. Yes, he's a great guy. Great guy. <coughs> Excuse me. Jeff is fascinating when he talks about travel his travels to Holland and to uh all over the world. Yes, he has with his dogs. With yep. his dogs and uh he goes to the most interesting places. Yeah, he's and done does a lot very, of Very, very well. Yeah. I've only traveled in the United States. I've not gone outside of the United States, but he's done very well. Very well. I like him a lot. How can people learn more about performance activities? So in today's age, I mean you can Google anything. Um I am out of the dog mall and carver, so they could always contact me there. Um, now you work there too. I do. Yep. Talk about the dog mall. So um, it's Carver's a carver is not far from here. Nope, nope, not at all. It's a small facility. They offer um, a lot of different things. They offer obedience, rally, happy ratters um, is another venue that uh, we didn't talk about. Um, agility. What's that? So Happy Ratters is um, on the same idea as Barn Hunt, um, except it's kind of like in suburban areas. So instead of in Barn Hunt, you search for rats in hay, and they, they make tunnels out of the hay. In Happy Ratters, it could be a garbage can, a backpack, um, a, a chair, a potted plant. The rats are hidden in behind or underneath or all these different kinds of things. So um, a lot of people are going towards happy ratters a little more um, because of the mess of hay um, and, you know, just the, the 
trying to find hay that you can use because uh, it has to be switched out. A dog might have an accident or something like that. So, um, so we offer that as well. Um, the dog mall does so performance sports, um, agility. Um, we do some rehab there. I work there as a rehab um, specialist. Um, I do underwater treadmill, laser therapy. Um, and then, of course, we have our pool, which is indoors, so we can jump or swim. You don't even have to jump to come there. Um, you could bring your dog in the wintertime because it's heated building or air-conditioned building. Um, and a lot of dogs don't want to, you know, aren't that competitive or a little afraid of jumping off the dock. It's pretty high. And they just come and swim. So it's good exercise year-round. It's very interesting. Yeah, it's a great facility, yeah. There's a lot of things that go on there that we can accommodate most everybody. Um, we have a trainer. They, she does boot camps. Um, she can, we teach Frisbee. I mean, just about anything that's you can imagine. That's interesting. Frisbee. Working with a Frisbee. Yes. That's hard. It's hard. I'm actually trying that with my youngest dog. Um, I'm not a very good Frisbee thrower. But we're, we're, we're learning. We're learning. So That's also an AKC sport. So if you have a registered dog, whether it's a purebred or, you know, a PAL registration or an IPL, ILP, IPL. An I, yeah, an IPL. Registration. I, yeah. um, you can get titles on your dog um, through um, UpDog. And they're, they're, can, they're um, ILP, yes. ILP, yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah, so you can get um, titles that way if you wanted to. But for me, it's not so much about the titles. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, I got a title in the mail the other day, actually. Um, one on one of my dogs for dock diving um, and that's great I love it you get the the certificate but it's more to me about having fun with my dogs and doing things with them my kids grew up they have their own lives and this is what I do for for uh, fun now we also had at one point on TV here we had someone who brought their dogs and uh, came on for training, went and brought them to we, uh, it was Leslie, in fact, who came and talked about the, uh, why am I not thinking? Uh, it was about the... Uh, I'm trying to think what Leslie does. Tricks? She did tricks, but she also went on to talk about uh, the... Uh, Agility, and she also talked about. Because uh, she's a, a, a big obedience person. She also was talking about the. Uh, and I, I'm not thinking correctly. Uh, she was talking about uh, meeting, uh, going on, and coming into nursing homes and things. Oh, therapy. Therapy. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not thinking correctly. That's okay. I couldn't come up with it either. Therapy. Yeah. So um, I believe that we teach that at the dog mall as well. Um, that's not something that I do, so I don't really know a whole lot about it. Um, I have a friend in New Hampshire who actually has a Labrador, and she goes into the hospitals and things like that with her dog. Um, it is great um, for the people. They It, it calms people. Um but like I said, I know don't know a whole lot about you know exactly how Leslie that works. came and we did pet therapy with uh, people who had uh, different uh, neurological problems. Mm -hmm. A lot of them had Alzheimer's. Oh yeah, and thing. And Leslie brought them and, and showed them the uh, and. Uh, it was a very calming and relaxing yes. experience for them. Yeah. Because many people had, you know, different forms of, uh, you know, neurological mm -hmm. issues. Years ago, I worked for a company um, out of Lakeville that took baby animals to nursing homes, um, preschools, and um, I took them to um, Taunton State Hospital. I don't know if you're yes. familiar with that. So I believe it's closed now, but um, back then... I would go there once a month with baby chickens, baby bunnies, ducks, 
They do that in Middleborough. Um, I'm trying to think what else I've had. I've had sheep. I've had pigs. Um, and they loved it. And that was my favorite part of the job. That was that once a month visit and just seeing how much the people loved seeing those animals. And we had a special way we could wrap them with blankets and they could hold them, you know, little chickens. And um, it just really, it, it really pulls at your heartstrings because they just, they looked forward to me coming every month. Um, you get to know them a little bit and, you know, hear their stories. And so pet therapy is, is huge. It's huge. And a lot of people who had various afflictions, uh, neurological problems, of which I had one as mm -hmm. a serious stroke. Right, yeah. And uh, that's why I wasn't forget uh, a few minutes ago. But uh, it was very, very relaxing to come. I was at a facility in Boston and people brought dogs. Mm -hmm. And they said to me, well, you must know about dogs. And I, I, was, I was sitting there and had fun because I knew they, somebody came with Labradors. And I said, oh, my God, I know these, all these breeds. And yeah, it, it yeah. was fun. Yeah, and it, it was very therapeutic. Yes, Even it is. for me as a patient in the hospital mm -hmm. in Boston, it was great. And uh, we, we did that uh, in uh, Kushnet with, through the Wampanoag Kennel Club, and we had many uh, people. We had about a dozen uh, people who came with dogs and brought them, and, and we had a little demonstration and everything. And people, it was amazing how they related to the dogs, and they remembered their own dogs 40, 55, 60 years ago. Right. Yep, yep. That's when I did that with the with the pets, the small baby animals. Um, we'd go into the nursing homes, and the stories were just wonderful to me. You know, the the people would remember. You know, I grew up on a farm, and we had, you know, all these different kinds of animals. And I had this one dog who worked on the farm, and just wonderful stories. So it's it's really a great thing that they can do. We had a couple of men who came who <clears throat> we didn't think they would be interested. And when they, they related to a dog, mm -hmm. a, a certain breed, and I remember that I had that breed 40 years ago or 50 years ago or six. He said, as a young, this guy was telling us, as a young boy, mm -hmm. I had a Sheltie and uh, talked over uh, about it and every, and it was great. So we have had a, they're telling me they're wrapping up that we've had a good afternoon here, and this has been great, and we'll have to have you come back again. Oh, I'd love to. I would love to. How can people learn more before we end? How can people get involved? Uh, how is there a show uh, that you can go on and, and see? So if they go on the Dog Mall website, it's okay, called the Dog Mall. The Dog Mall. Yep, in Cabra, you there are instructional videos. Um, there's videos of all of us with our dogs. Um, there's a news clip. We were on Channel 4 News one time. Um, it tells you everything you want to know. And then you can um, sign up. You wanted to come in. I usually teach there on Friday nights um, back in September. <coughs> I've had the summer off because I've been competing. Um, we have Nikki there usually on Sundays. We have a few other days that are open, but they can sign up and come in and um, come in and have a lesson or talk to somebody about you know what they might want to do. Um, we'd be more than happy to, to help them along. And learn about some aspect of performance activities. Exactly, yeah, everything's right on the website. Very good. It was a pleasure to have it you. It was a pleasure We'd to like be to here. We'd like to have you back. I would love to come back, thank you. And we'll you. talk about other things about dogs. Yes, always yeah. dogs. <laughs> <laughs> that's your your heartbeat that's huh? my passion that's yes. your passion of dogs is dogs yeah. it was great to see you thank, thank you, you very, very much. much for having us thank you